I'm here in the town of Snoqualmie, Washington. Uh, it's pretty busy today. It's a Saturday and a real sunny, nice day uh, at the end of May, so there's a lot of people here in town. It was hard to even find parking. But I'm going to go ahead and go around and see what we can find here in the town of Snoqualmie. And from there, I'll go on to Snoqualmie Falls, which I might make into a separate video. So join me today as I walk around town here and discover what Snoqualmie is all about and share some of my experiences here. I have a nice little lamppost with some flowers on it here on a little boardwalk they have across from Main Street in town and right next to the old train engines. It's a, a museum now. So this is the main street of town. As you can see, they kept the old-fashioned look to the town, kind of a Mayberry sort of look. A lot of quaint little places like the Copperstone Restaurant. The Snoqualmie Falls Candy Shop. And the Antique Store. cutting lumber. This is a wheel where they used to uh, put the lumber through. This used to turn the band that would saw the lumber. I was here in 92 with my family when we came to the Twin Peaks contest. Uh, Twin Peaks was on television each week and the main character, Agent Cooper, I had to wear a suit when I went into work and so people would always tell me that I looked just like Agent Cooper and one of them was reading the newspaper one of my co-workers and found out about the contest and kept telling me I should enter and then the other employees started encouraging me to enter so I did I came up here to Suquami and signed up uh, a day before on a Friday I believe it was these are the tracks that I walked down in 1992 as I was going to the contest. I came running out from one of those buildings over there and ran across the street. But it kept yelling because I was in full regalia. I was in the suit and the trench coat and everything. But he kept yelling, Kyle, Kyle. He came running up to me and I looked at him like, what are you talking about? And he got close and realized that wasn't him. But uh, he said, yeah, you look so much like him, you'll, you'll probably win the competition for sure. The next day we came down to the um, competition with my family and in-laws and everybody. Uh, at the time I had four, no wait, five children. <laughs> they came out with the movie Fire Walk With Me, which is based on Twin Peaks. It was a Twin Peaks movie, essentially. And they were also celebrating that as well as holding the Twin Peaks, you know, festival around it. And the festival went on for many years. I'm not even sure if it still goes on here or not. So anyway, we got to those that won their competitions and I won mine as it looked like for Agent Cooper. That was almost 30 years ago. Anyway, uh, I'm like a year younger than Kyle McLaughlin. He's like 6'1", I'm like 5'11", so he's a little bit taller, but other than that, everybody felt like I, I looked a lot like him, and so I won the competition. I got to meet the movie stars from the movie uh, Firewalk with me. Unfortunately, Kyle McLaughlin couldn't be there because he was in Europe filming some other movie, so I didn't get to meet him. But I did get to meet the other stars, and my family had a great time was on TV and the newspapers, that sort of thing. So it was kind of weird. It was like uh, I was a movie star for a day kind of thing. <laughs> that was a feeling. I was on Entertainment Tonight and Japanese TV. I had people following me around, wanting to take pictures with me and stuff. So it was fun, but you know, then you go back to real life. So <laughs> these train tracks aren't in use anymore. As you can see, they have the old trains there. They've now made it into a museum. You can see some of these train engines are pretty old. And that was uh, a train that ran for the U.S. Plywood Corporation here in Washington. I don't know if that became Weyerhaeuser 
or if they worked in conjunction with them because Weyerhaeuser are the people that owned all the land and or I should say a lot of the land around here and cut down most of the trees that went out to be made into wood products. I remember seeing trains like this from the old movies from the 1950s and 1960s. And pretty much here's what they allow you to see. When you climb up the steps to come up here, they don't allow you to go inside. Here's a train that would have been active during World War II. Looks like they uh, delivered medical supplies and service. And this is what it looked like inside the train. See, we got the stainless steel going there. Looks like they have a blender there. Maybe they serve some food as well. Uh, I stand corrected. They have the uh, train running now for the uh, train rides that people can buy a ticket on. It goes up to, I can't remember now, but it does uh, have a little trip that it goes, takes people on, probably takes an hour or two, something like that. I was thinking about doing it myself, but I don't know if I'll have time today. There's the conductor, dressed in an old-fashioned conductor outfit, saying so long to the passengers that took the first train out. Train tracks had me stand on for a picture in the Everett Herald. And it had to make me look like Agent Cooper, standing on the tracks, trying to solve a case. Yeah, they still have this gazebo here. That's where I stood to take pictures with people who wanted to look like they were posing for pictures with Agent Cooper. There goes the train. Full of tourists. like they have a lot of room in there. I really like this beautiful walkway they have here, especially on a nice day like today. People seem to really be enjoying it, walking along it. Uh, it's so fun to do things like this. There's another squirrel. And this gives you a bit of an idea on how big the trees were that they would cut down. Ah, if you notice something else, they still have Christmas decorations up. Ho, 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 ho. ho. Merry Christmas to everybody. Here comes the train coming back to the station. The people are waiting. That building is the bowling alley. That was there when I ran away back in 1972. From Redmond, which was like 20 some odd miles away from here. I think it's like 28 miles, 27 miles. I got angry because a certain brother, who shall remain unnamed, uh, had slugged me in the stomach. And I decided I wasn't going to take it anymore. I was going to run away. So I walked all the way toward Fall City. And apparently one of my friends had moved during the summer. And that's where he had moved to. So he saw me walking by his house after I'd gone about 10 miles. So anyway, I ended up staying there for the night. The parents were going to send me back home to my mom the next day. So anyway, I got up the next morning early before anyone else and left and walked the next 
I think it was 17 miles, something like that, up here to Snoqualmie. I had my little dog, Chacha. She was uh, half Chihuahua and like half Jack Russell or something. Anyway, she was pretty worn out by the time she got here too. We ended up stopping at that bowling alley and the lady there figured out I was a runaway and gave me something to eat. Called my mom and then she came and picked us up. So anyway, never did that again. At least not on foot. Thanks for joining me today in the town of Snoqualmie and I hope you'll join me again in the future on Adventures of Big A.